a blessed weekend to us. Today's Gospel reading opens the chapter in the Gospel of Matthew, particularly or specifically, where Jesus is put in the so-called, uh, the, it, it, take, it takes the, the offensive, because he was actually talking against the scribes and the Pharisees. And as an introductory uh, section or narrative, this already sets how, how sensitive the topic is. And uh, the Pharisaic characteristic of, well, we, we can say it in, in one way or another, which we actually have adopted as we have been accused, as Christians have always been accused of being Pharisaic in such a way as we have so many things to do when it comes to our uh, performance and fulfillment of our religion. But somehow we are also being questioned and challenged, of course. There are many, many exemptions. There are many people who are exep exempted to this. Uh, there's lacking from deep within us. And so one of the basic perspectives or premises in order to understand this uh, particular section of the Gospel of St. Matthew is the message that goes around and is the bottom line of all. And that is what we call the challenge towards consistency. And if you know how to bake a cake, or if you are a baker, or if you are a culinary enthusiast, you know what consistency is. No? Kung magloto ta, no? There is always consistency in the food that we cook. And especially if you are in the business, your consistency is your trademark. No, nga man nga kanuna yung paliton ang imuhang produkto because the, there is consistency in the taste. There is consistency in the product. And this is the very challenge that each and every one of us have, has to respond to. From the smallest reason to the huge and uh, particularly uh, universal uh, challenge in professing and in practicing our faith. But there are two important things that we have to first and foremost consider how to maintain such a consistency. And there are two C's related to this. Consi consistency is the third C. The first C that is important in considering consistency is con consciousness. That we have to be very conscious. Uh, not that we are doing things unaware. No? Uh, except for some few reasons or exceptions or, or conditions. But we have to be conscious of what we are doing. We have to be conscious of what we are saying. We have to be conscious of the consequences of what we are doing in the here and now. And then the second C is, in order to maintain such a consistency, we have to be conscientious at the same time. And conscientiousness related somehow to the consciousness, but the conscience here has something to do with God, who actually dictates what he wants us to do for the good, for the better, if not for the best. And once these three C's are put together, we are able to practically maintain a composure, another C, a composure not just before the God we love and the God we worship, but of course, in front and before and among our brothers and sisters to whom our devotion to God is best manifested practically, concretely, and bodily. Amen.